Dear subscribers, viewers and all my well wishes, this is Dipesh Kumar Bhagat, a lecturer of English, Maryland College, Biratnagar, Nepal. I cordially welcome you all to my YouTube channel named Dipesh Bhagat, which is especially targeted to the audience having interest in literature, music, art and never-ending quest for academic excellence. Today's video is especially designed for the students preparing for the examinations. In this video, I am going to explain, summarize and simplify the famous drama name entitled Malini which is composed by Rabindranath Tagore. Sir Rabindranath Tagore, adorned with the title of Gurudev, was a Bengali poet, philosopher, short story writer, song composer, playwright and above all the first laureate from entire Asia to receive the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1913. This poetic play Malini is a story concerning the theme of love and hatred among characters highlighting the religious conflict between Hinduism and Buddhism. Before I take you into the story of drama, let me introduce you with the major characters of the drama. As you can notice on the board, the major characters are listed here. King. King is ruling over the kingdom of Kasi, India. Kasi is one of the cities in India which lies in the Uttar Pradesh one of the states of India. Queen, Queen of the Kingdom of Kasi. Malini is the central character, the most important character. Central character because Malini is the character around whom the entire story of the drama revolves. She is the daughter of Hindu king. She is influenced by Buddhism and Next character is Kemankar. Kemankar is a leader of Brahmins revolting against Buddhism. Next character is Supriya. Supriya is a childhood friend of Kemankar who has never been separated from Kemankar. Then there is a group of Brahmins the Brahmins, they are demanding the banishment of Malini, banishment of princess, because princess Malini, she has been taught by Buddhist monks and she is very much influenced by the religious faith, the religious principles of Buddhism. She wants to spread Buddhism in the kingdom of Kasi, which is not tolerable to the Hindu Brahmins, the fanatic Brahmins and they believe that their, their religion is in danger and they must do something to protect their religion. That's why the Brahmins are revolting against Buddhism, in fact, which sounds, which appears at the beginning that they are revolting against Malini and the entire royal family. Then there is the another character, a minor character, Prince. Prince is a minor character because he has a very little role in the drama. Yes, now I am taking you into the situation. The background I mean which comforts your understanding of drama. Kasi, as I said earlier, is strictly a Hindu kingdom especially dominated by the fanatic Brahmins who can tolerate the influence and spread of any other religions against their religious faith that is Hinduism. Malini on the contrary is influenced by, she is very much affected by the religious principles and philosophy of Buddhism. She wants to spread Buddhism throughout the kingdom despite being the daughter of a Hindu king living in a kingdom 
dominated by the extremist Brahmins, Malini has challenged the Hinduism being converted as Buddhist. This is why some extremist Brahmins, they believe that Malini adopting a new sacred faith that is Buddhism has put their religion, their old traditional religion that is Hinduism in danger of losing the existence and therefore they are now demanding for the banishment of Malini, exile of Malini from the kingdom of Kasi so that their old traditional religion that is Hinduism can be shaped and preserved. These extremist Brahmins dissatisfied with Malini moved towards the palace raising their voice against Malini and the leader of the Brahmin group is Kemankar. Kemankar is a very straightforward, a man of determination. He is straightforward and accurate in his speech and action. That is, he does what he says and he says what he does. He is not influenced by any external forces. He is strongly, he is strongly determined and rigid in his principles and opinions. So this is the background, I mean the essential information required to understand the drama properly. Now let us move to the first scene of the drama. As the play begins, we find the Queen and Malini on the palace balcony. So this is the background. I mean the essential information required to understand the drama properly. Now let us move to the first scene of the drama. As the play begins, we find the Queen and Malini on the palace balcony. The Queen is trying to convince her daughter that whatever is she doing, Malini is wearing a very simple dress like a nun. She has no touch of gold or any expensive ornaments on her body. And Queen says that this does not suit a princess. The Queen, like all normal parents, is very much worried that her daughter has no interest in the luxury of the palace. She has no interest in the golden jewelries and ornaments and she is going to live her life like a nun. This is very painful to the queen and we know every parent is will be worried at this act of their children. The queen like all normal parents is very much worried that her daughter has no interest in the luxury of the palace. She has no interest in the golden jewelries and ornaments and she is going to live her life like a nun. This is very painful to the queen and we know every parent is will be worried at this act of their children. That's why the queen wants to. The queen tries her best applies all possible arguments before Malini to convince her to start a normal family life. But Malini, she is not going to listen to her mother. She is not going to be affected by any of the arguments of her mother. She believes that wealth does not have anything to do with the eternal happiness. She says a line, wealth does not cling to those whose destiny it is to find riches in poverty. Meanwhile, the king also appears on the stage and makes all his possible arguments, the logic to convince, to make Malini change her mind. 
the king in fact wants Malini to stop the promotion and advocacy of Buddhism at least for short time because the agitating aggressive Brahmins they are surrounding the palace raising their loud voice of revolution with the slogan banishment of princes the Brahmins are heading towards the palace and it is a very tough moment for the king. How can he banish, how can he exile his own daughter from his palace, from his kingdom? That's why the king makes all his attempts to convince, to change the mind of Malini, but all in vain. Now let us move outside the palace where the Brahmins have gathered and they are making slogans against Malini. One of the Brahmins appears with the information that the king's army is also going to side with them, which is not a good news in the views of some of the Brahmins. One of the Brahmins appears with the information that the king's army is also going to side with them which is not a good news in the views of some of the Brahmins because all the Brahmins are not of the same opinion, of the same strict determination. Some of the Brahmins believe that if army involves in this act of revolution, there will be the chance of, there will be the chance of if army involves in their peaceful demonstration, if army points the gun towards the royal family, it will be a kind of treason and there might be the chances of innocent deaths as it might turn violent and it might be, there might be blood shedding in the kingdom. Supriya shows his objection to the decision of the Brahmins because he holds the opinion that religion should not be imposed upon anyone forcefully, that love is the essence of all religions, that loud voice coming from the majority does not determine the truth. He defends Malini questioning the Brahmins what her offense is, what crime has Malini committed that she should be banished from, she should be exiled from her own kingdom, from her own palace. The opposing views of Supriya irritate the Brahmins and the aggressive Brahmins, they warn Supriya not to create obstacles on their path. They blame that Supriya is a pessimist, that he is a meddlesome who always creates hindrance to their enterprises, to their objectives and therefore they warn him strongly to keep silent or be away from them. Supriya, as I told you, is a blind supporter of Kemankar because he is the childhood friend of Kemankar and has never been away from him. He does whatever Kemankar tells him because he is a changing character. As he is not confident in his own faith, his own beliefs, he is a contrast of Kemankar. And we can also call him an unreliable character because he keeps changing his mind. Kevankar requests Supriya to end the debate with the Brahmins and keep silent because he strongly believes in Supriya. He knows that Supriya will help him in every action because he has always been in favor of Kevankar. Some Brahmins seem to be impressed by the statement, the arguments of Supriya and they also fear that if the army involves in their, in their demonstration, in their revolt, there will be a kind of rebellion in the kingdom. That's why the Brahmins get confused. They are unable to decide what they are doing is right or wrong and thus they start invoking, they start praying, calling upon the goddess.
they request o oh goddess of victory please come down upon the earth from your heavens and help us decide our faith will get victory not with the help of arms we are not willing to involve arms and weapons we are not willing to create any violent activities in our peaceful demand peaceful protection of the oldest religion our traditional religion hinduism that is the prayer that is the calling of the brahmins to the goddess of victory and a coincidence at the same time when the brahmins are requesting calling the goddess of victory at the same time malini appears in front of them saying i have come the brahmins have this illusion that the goddess has appeared before them in form of an innocent beautiful girl the brahmins are very surprised they are shocked the moment they come to know that the innocent girl the simple girl is standing in front of them is the daughter of the king is the princess malini they are very much impressed by the speech by the philosophical thoughts and views malini expresses in front of them she directly tells them that she is exiled and she wants to live with the people and she wants to help them in their miseries she is very very similar to gautam buddha lord buddha in this context in this situation the brahmins now drop the idea of banishing malini and they start praising her as they call her the divine spirit some divine soul of this world they take her safely back to the palace kevankar tries to stop them and he requests them to be firm in their resolution in their determination but the brahmins don't listen to kemon kaur any longer and they start appreciating malini they start calling her the goddess malini has also promised them that the door of palace will always be open for them now kemankar has only supriya to depend on because he believes the entire world can go against him but not supriya because he is one of the childhood friend of him giving reference to the intensity and intimacy of their friendship kemankar is emotionally able to convince supriya to favor him kemankar has now no faith on his own soldiers and therefore he decides to go to the foreign land to bring soldiers from outside and even if the destruction takes place even if there is blood shedding he is determined to protect his religion means he is ready to go to any extent to protect his religion that is hinduism kemankar now expects help from supriya and he warns him not to be influenced by the beauty and innocence of malini he warns him that his friendship is much older than the few days familiarity with malini he fears that infatuation for malini might force him to deceive his childhood friend kemankar that's why he warns supriya again and again not to be impressed not to be in, not to be affected by the innocence and beauty of malini and he is now going to the foreign land to bring soldiers from outside because he has no faith upon his own soldiers because the soldiers have already dropped they also like like the brahmins have dropped the idea of banishing malini and therefore he is going to bring the soldiers from foreign land so that he would protect his he, pre, he would preserve his old ancient religion traditional religion even though he has to uh, he has to invite destructions or blood shedding in the kingdom this means
Kemal Kaur is rigid in his speech and his action. He is not going to change his mind at any cost and requests Supriya to stay in the kingdom and keep him informed about the updates of the country. In the second act, we find the scene of the palace garden where Supriya and Malini, they are sitting together, exchanging their conversation, their views, their philosophy. They both seem to be impressed by each other. In fact, they seem to be infatuated. While Malini and Supriya, they are talking in the palace garden, one of the attendants comes with the information that some citizens want to see Sup Malini. But Malini refuses to see them at the time because it is her private time, it is her free time. She doesn't want to meet anyone at that moment. Here we have a question on the character of Malini. The readers doubt whether Malini really is a philosophical, gentle, an ideal girl or she is just pretending to be so in order to avoid the dangerous situation, the unfavorable situation that has come to them. Now the king comes to Supriya and he appreciates him. He is very grateful to Supriya because Supriya has saved the kingdom from destruction by informing him about the secret plan of Kemankar at the right time. The king offers Supriya the provinces that might tempt a king. He also offers the hand of Malini if Supriya wants. But Supriya refuses all the luxuries, all the comforts, all the rewards that the king offers him and he requests for the forgiveness of his friend Kemankar who is now arrested by the soldiers of the king. The king asks Kemankar if he is forgiven, what would he do? And Kemankar confidently answers, if he is forgiven, he would complete, he would fulfill his incomplete work. That is, he would go to the foreign land and he would bring soldiers and attack on the kingdom and to protect, in order to protect his religion. This response of Kemankar compels the king to give him the death penalty and he asks for the last wish of Kemankar. Now Kemankar says he wants to meet his friend, he wants to talk to his friend Supriya, his childhood friend Supriya on whom he has deep faith, deep belief. Supriya comes to Kemankar. The body of Kemankar is tied with the iron chains he complains Supriya, he criticizes him, he curses him for the betrayal, for deceiving his childhood friend and finally asks him to embrace once. When Supriya comes close to Kemankar, he embraces him with the chains and he strongs the chain that leads to the death of Supriya and he collapses on the floor. This infuriates the king and he asks for his sword saying, where is my sword? He wants to kill Kemankar at the same time but at the same moment Malini stands, she rises from the chair, from her seat and she says, father forgive him and there is the end of and this is the end of the drama. We shall have further discussions on some important questions and the linguistics aspects of the drama in the next video. Thanks Kripa Niravla. Uh, it was your request that I decided to make this video. Thanks for watching me. Do subscribe my channel if you have not done yet and please click on the bell icon that gives you notifications of my upcoming videos and I request you all to express your views, your opinions regarding this video. Thank you very much once again.
best of luck